Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Emmy, and today's video is a remake of my Heal Chronomancer guide, now updated with the rifle weapon. I also wanted to share some little known, super powerful variants of the build that are capable of solo carrying mechanics in raids, strike missions, and fractals. We've got a lot to cover, so here's the table of contents so you know what to expect. We'll start with a summary of the class and a general purpose build that works pretty much everywhere. After that, I'll go over two ultra-powerful variants that I use for specific situations. A 100% stability uptime build, and a my team can't CC because they're greeting DPS so I may as well do it all myself build. Let's start with the basics. Chronomancer is hands down one of the most powerful healers in the game. In the last patch, Gears 2 released an incredibly difficult strike mission boss with an achievement that only 30 players in the entire game have completed in the three months since its release. In every single one of those groups, they ran heal Chrono in both of their healing slots. So what can Chrono do? Heal Chronomancer can provide permanent uptime on either Quickness or Alacrity. The playstyle is identical for both. In addition, it has permanent uptime on Might, Fury, Protection, and Regeneration. It has access to unique forms of utility, including massive amounts of Aegis and Stability. Additionally, it has extremely strong crowd control that can nearly solo break Defiance bars in raids, fractals, and strike missions. If that already wasn't awesome enough, Chrono has access to all of the unique Mesmer utility that no other class can bring, such as long-range portals and mass invisibility. Now let's get into the actual build and gameplay. For gear, you'll want to run a very standard healing setup. You should be looking for some mix of harriers, minstrels, or givers. In general, the rule of thumb is full harriers, armor, weapons, and trinkets if you do not want to tank, full givers if you want to tank with the highest amount of toughness possible, or full minstrels if you want to tank and no one else in the squad has toughness. This allows you to bring more healing power and vitality. For runes, you'll be running Rune of the Monk for lots and lots of healing. Alternatively, if you're struggling to keep up boons, you can run Rune of Water for extra boon duration. For sigils, on both weapon sets you'll want to run Water and Transference to maximize your healing output. Finally, for the Relic, I have two recommendations. Relic of the Flock, which aligns really well with your heal mantra since they both have a 10 second cooldown, and Relic of Febe, which provides permanent swiftness uptime. It's worth mentioning that Heal Chrono already has a large amount of healing, so the Flock Relic can be overkill in a lot of situations. Swiftness, on the other hand, can be hard to come by, and it feels really good to be able to move quickly in both open world and in instance content, so Relic of Febe is a good way to guarantee 100% uptime for your team. For traits, you'll want to run this setup. I won't go over all of the traits in this video, but I want to highlight a few key ones. First is Ego Restoration. You create a clone every time you use a heal skill. This includes all charges of your heal mantra, meaning that you get three clones every 10 seconds. Next is Illusionary Inspiration. Anytime you create a clone, you heal others. Finally, you have Restorative Illusions. When you shatter, you heal your allies. For every extra clone, the healing is increased. I think you guys can see where I'm going with this. Finally, I want to mention Stretch Time versus Seize the Moment. One provides alacrity, the other provides quickness. Again, the playstyle between both of these is identical, so bring whichever boon your squad is lacking. Now let's talk about the weapons. The main ones you want are Rifle and Scepter Shield. Rifle is an insanely strong weapon for healing, boons, and crowd control. Rifle 2 has a low cooldown and can be used off CD for clone generation and healing. Rifle 3 is a dual faceted skill, let it time out for Might and Fury, or alternatively, cast it a second time for a burst of healing. Keep in mind, if you detonate it early, it will not provide any boons. Rifle 4 is a phantasm skill, so it can be used to generate quickness or alacrity. It also does CC. Finally, Rifle 5 gives a lot of barrier on initial cast. I would not recommend using the second cast of the skill unless you're using it for organized movement. For your offhand, Scepter will provide a clone for every auto attack chain that you complete, and the second skill is a channeled block. This works really well alongside shield, and this is a great set for learning how to tank. Alternatively, if you need ad control, I highly recommend swapping on a focus offhand. The second cast of Temporal Curtain will pull everything in a 600 radius, which is amazing for fights with a lot of ads. For utility skills, I would recommend these as you're learning the class. Mantra of Recovery, Mantra of Concentration, Well of Precognition, Well of Senility, and Gravity Well. Common skills to switch in and out are Well of Eternity, Signet of Illusions, Mimic, Mantra of Distraction, Mantra of Resolve, Feedback, or Portal. 
Now let's talk about the rotation, and seriously, it's super easy. As I mentioned earlier, you can honestly just spam your skills off cooldown and you'll get pretty far. But there is a gentle priority of skill usage that I would recommend. The general idea is start the fight using a phantasm skill so you can provide group-wide quickness or alacrity. After that, generate a lot of clones with Rifle 2 and Mantra of Recovery so you can keep shattering with three clones. Use Mantra of Concentration before any knockbacks, use Well of Precognition before any blockable attacks, and use Well of Senility for CC. I usually just stay in Rifle since the skills are so insanely powerful. I only swap to my offhand set for specific reasons, such as Shield for blocking, Focus for ad control, and Pistol for CC. I'll briefly mention Continuum Slit as well. I would recommend to open with 3 clones, and then prioritize your shatters even if you have 0 clones for them. The base shatter boons are great, so it's just free real estate. After that, prioritize wells, and then prioritize weapon skills that generate boons or healing. Now I'll do a demonstration on the Golem. If you ever want to practice your healing, this is a great way to do it. I like to turn on the arena damage at the extremely threatening level. I would also add quickness or alacrity to your character depending on which trait you have. Finally, it doesn't matter what the Golem is, so feel free to use any of the options for the target. Before starting the fight, make sure to charge up all of your mantras. Start with Rifle 4 to provide instant quickness or alacrity. I also like to place Rifle 3 down and let it expire to quickly ramp up Might and Fury. Now let's Continuum Split with 3 clones. An easy way to get 3 is to use the clone from Rifle 2 and drain the charges from Mantra Recovery. Once you have all 3, open up Continuum Split and use all of your Shatters, all of your Wells, and whatever else you can fit. Once Continuum Slit closes, you'll notice that everything is off cooldown again. From this point onwards, just keep using rifle skills and drain all charges of Mantra of Recovery every time it comes up. Whenever you reach 3 clones, shatter F1 through 4, prioritizing F1 and F2 for regular boon generation, F3 for CC, and F4 for stability. So, yep, just press buttons! Now that we've talked about the general purpose build, I'm going to talk about two variants that I often swap between. Let's first talk about the permanent stability build and rotation. I want to point out here that Chronomancer is the only class in the game that can provide 100% stability uptime. There are other classes that can splash stability, but they often have to time it carefully so it's off cooldown for every boss knockback. On the other hand, Chrono has access to so much stability you barely have to think about it. The gear and the traits are the same, and the primary difference comes from the utility skills. Going in order, Mantra of Concentration will provide stability on both the 3 second charge as well as every cast afterwards. Well of Precognition will give initial stability on cast, and it will continue to pulse stability for 3 seconds afterwards. In the Chaos trait line, the final column has a trait called Bountiful Disillusionment, which provides stability to allies when using your F4 skill. Finally, you can use either Mimic to refresh your Well of Precognition, or you can take Signet of Illusions to refresh your F4 Distort. The rotation can be thought of as a few general concepts. Charge and use your Mantra of Concentration off cooldown. During the 15 second cooldown, cast F4 into a Signet Refresh, or use Mimic into Well of Precognition. Then just repeat that over and over again. Now you'll be a favorite amongst your DPS friends since they'll never need to worry about their rotation being interrupted ever again. Finally, let's talk about my personal favorite variant, the ultimate CC build. Earlier, I referred to this build as the my team can't CC because they're greeting DPS so I may as well do it all myself build. And it's seriously not an exaggeration. On CC heavy fights, I'll often have done more CC than the entire rest of the squad combined. However, this variant is quite different from the general purpose build, so I recommend having either a different build template or a different character. In fact, if you have specifically an Asura Mesmer, this build gets even better. We'll talk about why in just a second. Also keep in mind that we are switching off a lot of healing power in favor of CC duration. That means that your overall healing output is going to be a bit lower. I only ever play this build if I am in a squad that's running a double healer, or if I know from experience that a boss's healing pressure is on the low side. We'll be changing up the runes, sigils, relic, and utility skills. Mesmer runes will increase the duration of dazes by 33%. For Defiant Foes, you can treat this as a 33% increase in the Defiance Break value. 
Sigil of Paralyzation will increase the duration of stuns by 30%. It's worth noting that stuns and dazes are two different types of crowd control. In other words, these unfortunately do not stack, but Mesmer has access to both stuns and dazes, so you should take both. For the Relic, we'll be taking Relic of the Citadel, which will blast your target with a stun whenever you use your Elite skill. For the Utility skills, Mantra of Distraction will daze on every cast and fully charging it will refresh the cooldown of your F3, which also dazes your target depending on how many clones you have. Well of Senility will daze your target when it's first cast, and Signet of Humility is an Elite skill that counts as a stun on your target. Finally, if you are playing any other race, take Signet of Domination, which is a 3 second stun. However, if you have an Asura, replace this skill with Technobabble. Technobabble is a racial skill that's only available to the nerdy rats. Technobabble is an instant cast daze instead of a stun. This means it benefits slightly more from Mesmer runes since you have 33% increased daze and only 30% increased stun. Also, instant cast means that it's great for CCing fast, which helps in places like fractals where the phases are very short. Again, the rotation can be thought of as a few general concepts. The boss gets a defiance bar, press all of your CC skills. If you have continuum split, first use continuum split so you can reset your cooldowns. No, seriously, that's it. If you see a blue bar, press all of the buttons on your skill bar. So ta-da, that's how you play Heal Chrono, and hopefully I've covered everything there is to know about piloting this class. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, or commenting to tell me what you think. I am also an ArenaNet partner, and I stream quite regularly on Twitch, so if you have any questions that you'd like answered, feel free to swing by and say hi. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next video.